Well, okay. Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to Tom's Guitar Show. I'm Tom. They call me Guitar Tom because I'm often seen with the guitar. They, uh, they used to call me on the phone and ask me questions like, uh, hey, man, what's your show about? I say, oh, about an hour. It's about guitar players, guitar playing, all things guitaristic. So here it is. If you, uh, well, you can't call in anymore. We don't, we don't do call-in shows anymore. And nobody does. You know, well, at least we don't. And, uh, but we answer questions about guitars, guitar playing, how to play the guitar, the care and feeding your guitar, what kind of guitar is right for you, like related topics like a guitarron, the guitar, sitars, lutes, woods, vihuelas, banjos, balaikas, bazookis, bajos, sextos, tiples, cavaquinos, chitoles, bandurias, and bandolims, and bandoras, and uh, well, what else is there? Duolas, um, and That's right, yeah. Pipe organs, piccolos, uh, accordions, ocarinas, uh, harmoniums, harpsichords, and harmonicas. Uh, Pixie harps, Jews harps, and Irish harps. That's right, even concert harps. My man would talk about it, clavinets and clarinets. And, I don't know, man, uh, clavichords. Anyway, if it feels good, do it. Um, but we'll talk about politics, world events, people's personality problems, whatever, but uh, try to keep it clean. It's a family show. So, so I, uh, I, I keep trying to get that, somebody turn that monitor on, and I'm tethered. So are you. Yes. Uh, I'm tied down. And I'm sure nobody's, uh, nobody out there, the production company is listening, but uh, uh, maybe somebody could uh, come in and fire up the monitor for me, uh, please. And yet, personne ici? I don't know. Well, I'll play something. If you ever see anybody who looks like they're uh, paying attention, call them over. Yeah. Well, I saw our fearless leader, fearless leader walk by. Well, he did, but I don't know where he went. So, uh, oh well. Oh yeah. I want to see all the magic being made. Well, I'm going to play this for a while anyway. So the guitar. I have here a uh, an Alhambra. They're, they're actually, I don't know if they're still making this year. This is some years old. This is their cheaper electric classical guitars from Spain. It's rather prosaic, but it actually sounds pretty good. And, uh, and because I, I'm stripped down and I were having a board meeting after this, and I'm, I'm, I'm uh, trying to keep it simple, I plugged into a Ditto, uh, X, X2, Ditto X2 looper and a uh, Fishman Loudbox Mini amp. So, and then I have really skinny wires and everything. I just, so I just uh, brought as the minimum possible, but I could, uh, hey man, I could pick and grin all night and think of it like this. somebody to turn on the monitor. If somebody could just turn on the monitor for me. I, I, uh, if, I had, if I had the monitor, I'd feel engaged and good, and I just want somebody to go, aha, I just wait, listen. Ah, look, oh, there I am. Hey, we're on the air. Hey. Now I know. Now I feel like I'm really on TV. Where was I? I was playing this. Ready? And. Thank you. 
So there you are. So um, do you ask Bob, uh, so you may or may not be snowbirding as soon as next week? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you might or you might not. Yes, okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, so I was telling you, and I'm telling anybody else who listens, we're going to change the format of this show after all these years. So, we, what, Tom's Guitar Show, we've given you this. Is there somebody ready to step in next week? No. Oh. Uh, we don't have a second banana. I, I do um, have some ambitions. Uh, I, you know, I, I kind of want to do like a little bit of sketch stuff, you know. But I think the point is, rather than having the regular, and I, I'll see how it feels, because I, I talk to people, I, I, we've had some interruptions and some difficulties of this show over the last, you know, few months, because uh, of the, the revamping of the studio and everything like that. So I, I, I'll, like, run into somebody and ask me about my show, and I'll say, well, we're, you know, things are changing, and, and uh, thinking about doing a different show rather than going live for an hour every week. And, people, and everybody who says, I don't think that's a very good idea. Everybody here thinks it's a great idea for me to go down, like, produce a few three-minute like clips every week, we play something, maybe, you know, maybe I talk to you about something and put these up on the and on YouTube, but other people, the people actually watch my show say, oh, I don't think that's a good idea. So if we still had a call-in show, we could see if somebody would call in and tell me what they thought, but I, I could so give you. So we see that tweet address. Yeah. Next time, tell them what you think. That's right. Or next time you see me in the supermarket. Yeah. There you are. Well, Tom is known to preach a high V, so. Yeah. That's basically the place that supplies my, my usual needs, you know. Right. And your human contact. That's right. Well, I get to, to know the, the Night Stalkers. I wanted to do a humorous uh, TV show called The Night Stalker because there was a Night Stalker. Yeah, there was a Darren McGavin. Darren McGavin. Yeah, I don't remember if I watched it, but I think I might have watched a couple of them. I, don't know. I thought, ah, oh, The Night Stalker. That needs to be. He was a reporter who reported on. Magical things, also. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I wonder if they have, if they have any uh, supernatural events that happened at the High V over the night shift. <laughs> if they, uh, I see. They want to talk about fund management. Yeah, right. <laughs> Probably not. Yeah. You know. Mostly, what I see there are a bunch of guys who don't get, don't get enough sleep or trying to get all the cans of soup up on the on the shelf before the, the day shift comes and. and uh, Nobody bowling the frozen turkeys and squeezing the bottles? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I, I don't think they've got that kind of... Are there videos of those, I suppose? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I suppose I'm sure there are, but... Uh, no, they, uh, they have frozen the turkey, too. They have, they've got those long aisles. That'd be, yeah. that'd be quite a sport, you know. No, I think they're trying to get caught up. I know a guy, though, who um, has been there for a long time, and uh, he... Uh, going to go to work for his brother, who was an attorney. And uh, so I knew this guy when he started Hy-Vee many years ago. He had worked at Econo Foods, which is no longer. It was part of the Randall's, uh, you know, empire. And I guess that's, they went into a steep decline and, and condensed back to their roots or whatever. But so it was, it was a large uh, supermarket. So he'd been there for many years and developed some seniority. But the uh, corporate decided to pull the plug on that one. So he went to Hy-Vee as a they were the warehouse for a string of convenience stores around the area, too. Really? The counter foods? Which I think is where they came from, and then they decided to open up a store of their own. Hmm. Well, I know counter foods was linked with Randall's, which was a supermarket that was here for many, many years, and uh, I think, and then they... Uh, I can't remember what the name of the convenience store was named. It wasn't, it's a, like it wasn't a quick trip, was it? No. It, it wasn't one that's still around, I don't think. Yeah, is quick trip still around, or is it... Is it something else? No, I don't know. Yeah, no, there's, there's still two feet of that. Oh, okay, all right. And there's one down not too far from where my son lives in Ankeny. Hmm. Well, actually, I'm not even sure about that now, whether it was Randall's or, uh, if I'm thinking of Randall's or Eagle stores were. Oh, man, the big supermarket chains of my youth, uh, the local ones, you know. I wonder how Piggly Wiggly's doing. They don't have those around here, but. Uh, Well, when my mother was from Wisconsin, it was a Piggly Wiggly. When I was a little kid, I thought that was hilarious. Yeah. But uh, anyway. Yeah, Piggly Wiggly and A and P. Yeah, I used to go to the A and P. It's a public radio building now, but it used to be the A and P when I was a kid. 
for it anyway. Well, anyway, yeah. So, uh, well, anyway, Dick, uh, Dick, he was in his last, uh, he was in his last day in the job. He was like his last night, I think. I ran into him. He's stocking shelves. He was running around. He's a guy who's like my age, you know. He's running around stocking the shelves in a big hurry with a two wheel cart and things. And, and so he said that, you know, in the morning, the uh, management tells him, complains about all the things they didn't get done during the night. And then for the first time in life, he decided he didn't care. Or maybe this is a couple of days before his last day. But anyway, he, now he finally didn't care anymore. So anyway, I brought that up, the night stalker. Oh, well. See, if we go to a more efficient format, we can't do this anymore, uh, Bob. And actually, some people tell me they actually like this. <laughs> you know, wasting a couple old guys wasting time on TV, you know, I guess. Oh, well. Um. Well, what I want to do is to have these short vignettes, it's a French word, uh, you know, short, you know, like whatever, me play something, uh, have them tag, like, see, like, okay, what kind of playing through this guitar, that amp, that pedal, or whatever. I'm playing this classical guitar piece uh, by this composer on this classical guitar, you know, and maybe even mention what kind of strings I'm using, just like these. So people who are like searching the internet for information will come up with that. But then sometimes I'll come up with things where it's just like, whatever. We can talk about Elvis, you know, and then, but then these would pop up all the time on, on, maybe on YouTube or Vimeo or whatever, but they'd also be here on the local cable station, which is, so. Uh, on those laughing head walls mm -hmm. with all the windows, people, oh, yeah. people would open a window and say something, or, yeah, yeah. or hee haw, and the hee haw, honey, mm -hmm. spread, we're not one to go but repeat and gossip, so you better be sure and get it right the first time. Yeah, I see, yeah. There you go, uh-huh. Yeah, that's uh. And the guys outstanding in their corn field. Yeah, yeah, outstanding in their field. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I, I think I knew that joke before hee haw. I saw, saw it on hee haw, but uh, they don't make shows like that anymore. You know, they do it like a season or whatever in a couple of days. Mm -hmm. They just chop them up and paste them in. Right. Another thing I saw was the uh, the uh, bat, you know, Batman and Robin walking up the wall. Yeah. You know, and then. Oh, yeah. I saw one, yeah, recently, and they're the cameos, all the, the different actors of that era who had come out and, and, and you know, talk to, interact with Batman and Robin. Art Winkletter. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and, and uh, yeah. Sammy Davis Jr., familiar, familiar faces. Familiar faces if you, you know, if you're old enough, but, which, of course, we are, but anyway, yeah. Yeah, I remember, uh, yeah. But I suppose they could, if you can shoot a bunch of stuff, like, in one day, thing is I don't want to wear the overalls, you know, and uh, because, you know, I've been in New York and, and uh, Los Angeles, Paris, you know, Chicago, whatever, Boston. Right here a while back, Pat Sajak and Matt Wright were one week in a row. Really? A week, two months worth of uh, I can't say the name right now. I don't know. Wheel of Fortune. Oh, okay. Well, that's the way to do it. But I want to do a bunch of things like wearing overalls, like uh, because people who watch this show in other places, you know, people think Iowa. I don't look like. Yeah, so I just want to, I want to sat, sat, satisfy their feelings. We're not coming in Iowa, Greg. That's right. Well, I got the plaid shirt. Maybe I look like somebody from Minnesota. Right. Yeah, the, yeah, the hat with the flaps on it. Yeah. yeah. I've got a hat like that too, you know. But, uh. Does it have a pig on it or a snout on it or something? Yeah, it's a baseball cap with a pig on it. Right. A picture of a pig. On it. A picture. I want to get one. There's a cartoon picture of a pig with, with like really a mascara and long eyelashes and eyeshadow and stuff like that. And then I want to say, how about them hog eyes? I thought, I think that's the hat I want to get. But uh, I know a guy who has a, he's a big, uh, huge hog producer in Kelowna, in the Kelowna area. And uh, sometimes he wears his corporate hat. 
you know, like a, uh, they do bread and pork. So I thought that's what I should get. But when I was a kid, you know, like when I moved to San Francisco, I had overalls that I wore, and I, I usually wear them with a beret and a turtleneck sweater, you know, because I was, which is actually kind of convenient because, you know, these are easy clothes to take care of and things. But, uh, but I. It was a coffee shop. Sort of, yeah. But I had the, but the bib overalls with the pinstripes, you know. Or maybe I had the denim. I don't know. It's been a long time ago. But, uh, which is kind of funny because I had a job as a messenger for a legal services company, LCAPS, Legal Communications and Professional Services. So we would uh, deliver documents in between law offices. So we'd go up to these, in the financial district, these law offices where they had the expensive looking lawyers and they're very, expensive looking receptionists who didn't seem to have a whole lot of work on their desks at all. But you go around the corner and there'd be some, some like middle-aged woman who has a piles of stuff on her desk and like seems to be frantically working hard. So, they, so you go to the receptionists. But I wore the big bib overalls and the turtleneck sweater and the beret and these wallaby shoes, you know, and I, and I had this beat up briefcase and I would go around. But I, you know, I was 21 maybe and uh, yeah, it was a long time ago. But, and then I didn't look out of place at all, because that's kind of what you expect. My, my counterpart that worked there, too, was a guy who had hair down below his shoulders, which wasn't all that common back. Well, I guess it was, you know, and, 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 a, and a mustache, and he wore a, a ratty sport coat and, and beat-up jeans and carried a similarly beat-up uh, briefcase, and we would deliver things. But, but you now I always thought the hat, though, that I one would wear, though, in the old days, was like a great big straw hat to keep the sun, because the... The gimme hats, where you advertise farm implements or seed corn, those guys get cancer, skin cancer on their ears. See, so what you need is a big, you know. Well, like the Amish wear. Yeah, but these are straw hats that they used to, I mean, you see the old pictures of them? Because it was, there's something, I think in the 60s or 70s, it switched over to the, the ball caps with the, the, the gimme hat, you know. Yeah. But. Then all the seed companies, the feed companies, what not start handing out baseball caps. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I want to get one with the, how about them Paul guys? Where was I? I could play a, I was going to play something in C minor. Like, like the old river. Why? C didn't give Somebody to switch. Yeah. Uh -huh. Say so we have a guitar player in here. You can use a little more headroom there too. I don't mean to be personal there, but uh, oh, here we go. Oh, thank you. All right, here we go, and I'm gonna go.
I'm going to try to time, time that uh, the sneeze will be rhythmic, but that little kid is, the little boy is taking his lesson, he had the hiccups, and I'm trying to get it timed so it, you know, be, in, 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 keep the hiccup and rhythm. Yeah, the rhythm. He has a certain tempo going, and we're on the uh, hit, you know. Yeah. Oh. There's a Three Stooges about that one. We just talking about the Three Stooges earlier. I might have told you this before, but I think uh, Larry Fine's finest moment, and maybe one of the most relevant, to my life anyway, moment in cinematography, you know, cinematographic uh, history, was in uh, uh, Punch Drunks, which I believe was the only one that the Three Stooges actually wrote themselves. Uh, and that was the one where, uh, well, see, the thing was that Curly, whenever he heard Pop Goes the Weasel, he would go crazy and become extremely violent, so they turned him into a prize fighter. And then uh, somehow somebody sat on Larry's violin, and he, you know, and then right when the, the, the big boxing match was, and he was, you know, and there was uh, Curly, you know. Couldn't make music make Curly crazy. Yeah, and then so they were in trouble. So uh, anyway, and Pop was a weasel, of course. And this is, a, you know, but the thing is, so, so there's a restaurant. This scene's a restaurant, and uh, Larry walks in, and I, I know they had the uh, access to the, you know, the costume department of the TV, uh, the, the movie studio. And this was in the 30s, but they probably they had stuff going back in well into the early 20s. So he had this, you know, out of date, uh, shabby looking outfit. Larry he comes in with his violin case to the restaurant and says, "I think you have a, a nice place here. I think it'd be a little nicer if you had some music." And the restaurant says, "How much you charge?" He says, "Well, usually you got $400, but for you, I'll play for $300." And then the guy says, "Oh, I'll give you a bowl of soup if you're good." And there's Larry getting his violin out of the case and saying, I hope the soup is good. See? And that's the, uh, that's kind of, I see, you know, because, you know, I'm, 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 you know, I book gigs for myself, you know, and uh, this is kind of how I feel. So actually, if I can remember that, I'll have a smile on my face when I go somewhere. And because, uh, you know, if you, um, guitar players have a certain reputation. Well deserved, I'm afraid. And, uh, and uh, as you know, humor is based on tragedy. And so, uh, if I show up with a guitar player, I mean, as a, with a guitar, you know, the people go, "Oh." Even the restaurant I play at now, you know, I walk in with my guitar, and people who aren't hip, you know, they go, "Oh no," because they think I'm going to sing. That, that Tuscan moon is Kelowna. Beautiful downtown Kelowna, Iowa. Basically, a kind of. Saturday nights. Yeah, I don't know about Thursdays anymore, and. Uh, we're getting into that season, you know. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, slow season. Slow season. Yeah. So I'm supposed to call him on Thursday afternoon. See if he'll, if he needs a guy like me on Thursday. Be nice. So when you call for your reservation at Tuscan Moon, ask the guitar players on tonight. Yeah. Some people do, you know, because they, and they mean it not because we told them to on Tom's guitar show, but because they. Uh, they, they want it. You know. And really, I don't talk to anybody like this. I don't talk much to anybody at all. I don't have a microphone to talk through. I have my, basically, a nylon string guitar and a little amp, and I do like what I'm doing here, except I do, um, you know, popular songs from the American Songbook. And the English, too, I guess, like the Rolling Stones and, uh, yeah, and the uh, Beatles. But, uh, but, I mean, I do, like, you know, kind of polite you know, classical guitar versions of, of people's uh, rock and roll favorites. But it reminds me, yeah, I could do, uh, well, who cares, right? I'll just, I will do a Rolling Stones song. Why not? <laughs>
don't really like the way I did that. Hang on. I'm making a loop. The mind wanders, you know.
I have a tuner on this guitar too. Yeah, that's the one I tuned while I was playing. It's, that's the only one that's in tune. Tuner, okay. Yeah. Built in tuners. What do I think of next? Actually, these have been around for years. I'm kind of slow to adopt new technologies. I did show you I got a new flip phone, though, didn't I? Yeah. It's a, it's a 4G or whatever, G4, G, 4G. Yeah. This is a $20 phone. Yeah. The, uh, I had the uh, $10 phone, you know, but... Uh, yeah, I had the 3G. Yeah, well, I was having trouble with that, so I got the 4G. I mean, I had yeah. the 3G because I was having trouble with the 2G. Right. I kept getting those emergency calls only. Yeah. So called up the yeah. uh, track phone and said, what's going on? They said, Your phone's obsolete. Yeah. Well, that's what happens. I haven't figured out where the minute, like, I, I can't seem to figure out how to, like, just buy a card at Hy-Vee, and I think I'm supposed to do it online now. I don't think I can, I can't figure out where it is on the phone, how to add minutes. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, on mine, it's on the phone. I yeah. Mean, I used to do it on, online. But yeah, I used to do it online, but then I used to do it on the phone. 4G phone, now it's on the phone. Yeah, well, now I'm on the 4G phone, and I think I have to go back online, but, and I don't really have any financial instruments at my disposal. I have to go through a, Proper channels at home, you know, yeah. management, right. and my wife, you know, yeah. so, uh, yeah, because I used to go and, you know, well, you know, when I'd, I'd hang out with the night stalkers at Hy-Vee at uh, midnight, you know, and I'd go yeah. buy a card for 20 bucks, and they could take a quarter and scrape off the, the gray stuff to get my code, and I'd punch it in there, and about a minute later, go beep, and then I'd, you know, be good for another three months, but, you know, yeah, well, Time passes, and then, you know, I guess. Season change, and so do I. Yeah, there we go. So, uh, sooner or later, <laughs> sooner or later, your phone becomes obsolete. I guess sooner or later, I'll become obsolete. Maybe it's, maybe it happened, and I didn't know it, huh? Anyway, but. Um, yeah, who would have thought we'd have a phone we could carry around in our pocket, and it would go obsolete? Yeah. All right, well, that's how it goes. Dick Tracy, Two Way Radio. Man. Uh -huh. Who believed anything like that would ever be real? Well, we we're having a little meeting over here, and Gerardo had this little thing on his wrist there, a little watch like thing, and, and he said something, and, and then the uh, little voice came out of his wrist, repeating it and trying to get the, you know, trying to process it and get him into some other thing, and, and so he pushed a button on it and made it stop. But it just like it picked up the phrase. So we have the Alexa. We disconnected it, and Laura disconnected it and put it in the basement, and then uh, and then she brought it back up again, because uh, you know they can spy on us. But the thing is, the kind of things. My wife has one. Uh, yeah, I'm sure it, it reports it. I keep telling her everything you say it reports it back to Google. That's right. Well, I suppose. Or it's uh, maybe it's Amazon. I think it's Amazon. That's I Amazon. Yeah. Very well. You know. It's one of those things, though. You know, like. Uh, like the kind of stuff we would talk about is uh, really dull. I mean, for anybody else, it's, it's dull for us. I think it was for anybody else. So, I mean, it's some computer listening in, and maybe you'll get the wrong idea, but that's one of those things. You know, I don't know if nobody's watching, so I can tell you this, but uh, there's this book of cleans and dirties that I, I don't think I ever read it, but I heard about it. And that you could say something that can be taken two ways. And, and one was bad news from abroad. You know, you could take that a couple of different ways. Yes. Yeah, anyway, uh, we're not going to go into it, of course, but... Uh, this being a family show. That's right, yeah, we're not going to talk about it, but... Uh, but, you know, so you, so you never know. I mean, if there, there's a, a bunch of stuff like that, you know. You could, um, if I were a comedy writer, maybe I could, you know, work on those. You ever watch those British comedies, like, Are You Being Served? Yeah. You know, they have those things, you know, the woman with her cat, and all these things, but a lot of the other things. He's a Japanese. He has trouble getting his tongue around his R's. 
you know. Anyway, <laughs> I could see that be a problem. Anyway, never mind. But uh, anyway, so uh, just talking about an accent that's you know, it's hard to speak English. Anyway, um, that's Benny Hill used to do an accent, mm -hmm. and it was an all-purpose accent. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it was his Chinese accent, sometimes it was his Irish accent, mm -hmm. but they all sounded just alike. That's right. But you'd think that your Alexa or your or your wrist device could overhear what you're saying and might take it the wrong way. I mean, they do that anyway. So, anyway. Sorry, I'm going to fall asleep. <laughs> There's that one show where I drank coffee all through. Boy, I was peppy. Anyway.
That's the wrong chord. I don't know, I don't... Now think about this chord, this depends, it could be a couple different chords depending on how you look at it. Ted Green book about chord chemistry. Put the notes together, you know, that's a, he, had, he had a greater mind than mine. You know, he achieved a lot. He wrote a lot of articles, wrote a book, thought, you know, revised his book many times about chord theory and all, a really great guitar player. I have one advantage over him. I'm not dead yet. But you know, by the time he was my age, he'd been like dead for six years. But, uh, I don't think he was like one of those druggy kind of jazz guitar player guys. I think he, I think he just had a heart attack, you know. His brain was probably too high functioning for his, for his heart to be able to supply it or something like that. I don't have that problem. So. Anyway, uh, I'm so far behind on my schedule in life that uh, I have to live to be 103. Anyway, never mind. I was just thinking about that. I, yeah, he said, if I knew that I was going to live this long, I would have taken better care of himself. It was his wife, though. He, he talked about the hen house. Uh, and he, he, I think he, uh, he credited his longevity to his, his wife. Or if, if, if she was his wife, I don't know what the deal is, but he, he called it the hen house, where he would go home to after the gigs. So, yeah, he wouldn't have made it that far. But an interesting guy, you know, I was seeing a video of him playing when he was, like, really old. There's this old man with his long, spindly fingers playing the piano and uh, doing quite well at it, too, which gives us all hope. See, my original idea when I began this show, this particular show, like, 25 years ago, was to uh, do it for a couple of years and then get picked up by, uh, do like, a PBS Saturday afternoon show. And... Uh, I thought this would be my stepping off, you know. And, uh, or actually, the original, original Tom's Guitar Show was even longer ago. It was 1990. So that's what, what, uh, 29 years ago? Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, anyway, I, uh, but the, uh, the thing is, uh, you know, that, that, uh, I, I mean, I was this, uh, possibly a younger, fitter looking Tom, and, uh, I had all these ideas, wrote scripts and stuff like that. I thought it was just a matter of time before I figured this thing out. And uh, so, 25 years after this show, or almost 30 years after the original Times Guitar Show, I haven't quite figured it out yet. But uh, in 2020, it'll be my uh, 30th anniversary of uh, attempting to make a Tom's Guitar Show that would get me on PBS. Maybe I should bring in some hand puppets. Maybe, yeah. We could be like Mr. Rogers. Yeah. yeah. Sherry Lewis, Lamb Chopper. Yeah. Jim Henson would come with the frog. That was successful. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Um, there was a show called Guitar Guitar back in like the 60s or maybe early 70s. And there was this woman, and it was like in those days they, they like to say things twice. That was the thing, like Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. That was like, a, so it says Guitar Guitar. And um, she had, uh, um, yeah, she, she would uh, teach people guitar lessons on, on, you know, on this pretty low-budget public TV show. And she actually had some famous people on. I can forget who it was, but it was somebody who was like really some real hot rod guitar player who didn't read music. And she was lecturing this guy on how he should learn how to read music. But, of course, he was, I don't know. I forget who it was, but it was somebody. I mean, I, I suggest you all learn how to read music. Um, but... You know how you get an uh, electric guitar player to turn down his amp? They put a sheet of music in front of him. Uh, yeah, yeah. 
turn down real low. Anyway, so, but uh, anyway, that was my dream. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Looks like a Roger Miller hit with a star. Mm -hmm. There you go. Right. Well, <laughs> I've had actually people who, who think I, I, I have a, like a really big ego because I'm, was a, I'm a, like a, because at the time they were, I was considered a star on the local public access station. You see. If I would get a big ego over that, you know, I would have problems. In fact, it's an insult <laughs> to say that somebody has a big ego, that somebody thinks they have a big ego because they're a star on the uh, public. I, mean, uh, I have no illusions. It's true. I am recognized at the supermarket. Oh, you know. Well, you're the guitar guy from TV. You know, because sooner or later, anybody who has cable is going to see it. But you know. Well, Roger said that too. Number one attraction ever supermarket parking lot. Mm hmm There we go. Mm hmm Yeah. But you wonder. I mean, I, I think it'd be kind of hard. I mean, Elvis, you know, had. Uh, I guess he, he couldn't really go anywhere, and the colonel wouldn't let him go anywhere. Yeah. You know, and he was a prisoner of his own fame because, uh, you know, women would chase him and, and things. And uh, just think of the problems I don't have, huh? Yeah. yeah. You know, dogs don't even chase me. I mean, <laughs> it's okay. I don't want to be chased. I don't have to. I mean, a lot of people are out there running, running all the time. They, nobody's chasing them either. But you know, I don't get it. I don't know, man. Yeah, big star of public access. <laughs> Anyway, this is, this is supposed to be my last show in this format. Well, yeah. It sounds like that's the top 20 of your bits, you know, the Benny Hill thing. Mm -hmm. Yakety sacks and chasing around. Yeah. I'll probably find it somewhere. I'll make it play it. I want to do a lot of duets too. I get people on to do duets with me, stuff like that. I mean, Donna's doing that. She's, we're working some stuff up together. But what we're doing is like classical music for banjo lele duet. You know, like Beethoven, like a movement from Beethoven's Seventh Symphony and, and things, you know. Uh, I was thinking of Camille de Saint-Saëns, The Swan, with man, for mandolin and, and baritone ukulele and things like that, you know. So we do classical music, but with. Uh, just think all the hate we can get on YouTube for that, huh? Yeah. Look what the tags on there. Uh, Saint-Saëns for uh, uh, mandolin and ukulele. Or maybe my banjo, Lynn, and her uh, tenor banjo. I have a, a, oh, thank you. I have a banjo mandolin, you know, that's a, 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 from the, probably from the 20s. And I've had it kind of restored, but now the, the drum head cracked on it, so I need a guy to put a new, a new head on it. Yeah. But uh, because it's a mandolin, I can play it right away. It's like I have a certain instruments that I know how to play right away because they're like some version of something I already know. And uh, anyway, so uh, I have duets, you know, with weird instruments and stuff. So we could do uh, yakety sax, but I don't know. We could, I mean, I don't have a, I, mean, I could probably find a sax player someplace. Or, there are probably a few of them around. But we could do something else, yeah. you know. Well, like I say, Glenn Campbell used to do it on a guitar and call it Yak and the Axe. Yeah, yeah, I think I've seen that. I think uh, Chad Atkins might have done it too, I don't know. But well, Chad Atkins did everything, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. Oh, well. Well, we're about done here, I guess. So, uh, so, you, so you might be back next week. You might not. Okay. Well, this is about it. With a new format, I don't know if I even play this song anymore.